and recall the snow. I can remember what I saw. I was stepping in the frozen white water, burying my legs to my knees. The ground and sky were illuminated by the white, giving me no sense of time. Morning, noon, or near night, I could not have known the difference. Not with the snow swirling around me, confining my vision to only a few feet in any direction, and the wind forcing my eyes shut. Most would not have gone into the white as I did, but I knew that if I kept my feet straight, I would find the trees where I meant to go. Once there, I could find my way onto the place I called home. The wind was constant, and as long as it struck my right side, I knew I was not veering far from the proper course. I stepped long in the frozen white water, gripping my arms to press my coat against my chest. I kept my gaze forward, toward the wall of downward falling snow, hoping that I would see something new and know that I was not just moving in place. And I did see something new. At first, I saw only a shadow, a formless gray ghost not far beyond me. I did not assume it was alive, not until I saw her. When the wind and snow between us grew thin, I saw that the gray ghost was actually a white woman. I say white not because of her skin, which was actually rather olive in shade, but because of her hair. It was not silver, nor was it gray or blonde. It was as if the snow itself had frozen upon her head. But it did not move as ice. The wind was harsh, and her blank mane seemed to float by the command of the cold air. I could see only that and her shoulders. It was not until I got closer that I realized she was bare. She wore not a single bit of cloth, by the time I saw the near hole of her body through the snow, I had stepped too close. Her hair whipped round as she turned to set her gaze on me. I stopped, and she stared. She did not shiver in the cold or seem to care. Instead, she locked her eyes on mine. Eyes that were surely green, but held a gray hue. Enough for one to mistake the color for blue. Although we seemed to watch each other for an endless time, it was but a second until the woman turned again and disappeared into the white and the gray. Truly she must have been a ghost, to have been gone from sight so fast. I continued forward, my pace hastened. Before I could decide why I wanted to follow her, I became lost in the endless wall of snow, hoping to see that shadow again. The roaring wind conquered the sound of my steps although I cared not for what noise I made. I remained focused on the wintry abyss ahead. Each time forward was hard. I forced the snow up from the surface as I pushed through. My sight grew more strained. I was blinded by the white that encased me, and my right arm became stiff from the cold. I began to realize that seeing the woman again was not important. Why she was there, absent clothing in the snow, was not my concern. Finding the forest was what mattered. I maintained the straightness of my feet, hoping to see the dark of the trees ahead, but I did not see trees. I saw only white, until I saw gray. It was but a shadow in the storm. I halted, then moved forward slowly. The gray grew clear until it became white. I saw that it was her, only now I did not look at her back. She stood, turned towards me. Her eyes were locked with mine, but her gaze was soft. The snow seemed to hide her body, for I saw no bare skin. I thought she had, perhaps, taken up a coat. But a coat from where? It was not until the wind calmed that I saw it was not a coat. Her face was not of an olive tint, because it was covered in white hair. Her mouth was long, and her ears were high and pointed. 
Her hair swayed in the wind, and I saw that the white hair I had mistaken for a coat held much closer to her skin. Her chest gave noticeable evidence for her gender, even though it was covered in fur. Her eyes captivated me. Although I quickly saw that my stare was upon the head of a wolf, I could see that she was a woman, even just in her face. She seemed to pause for a moment. It was as if she, like me, wanted to become caught in the same game of eyes. I could not have moved even if I had wished to. I was not afraid of what I saw. I was willfully trapped in the snow, feeding my eyes with this bizarre sight. She was the first to move. Her eyes turned down, and her head turned away, as if she were ashamed. Then, just as quickly as she had reappeared, she was gone. I was determined now. I had lost hope that I would find her before, only to see her again. Only now, she had become different. Her colorless hair had become a natural shield from the cold. I had to see her. Even as my legs and my right arm began to fall numb, I stepped forward with strong pace. I could feel the blood rushing to my face as the cold burned my bare skin. The side head became familiar. Angle falling snow and an endless whiteness. Flakes clung to my brows, and I brushed them off, only to wipe my face with the flakes that clung to my arm. The wind seemed to push me off course, as if it did not want me to find her once more. Nevertheless, I maintained whatever straight path I could, having only a uniform ground below me and a wall of snow before me. With warmth dissipating within me, I found it hard to muster the strength to continue. My leg muscles became stiff, for while they were also cold, it is much harder to move in high snow than on grass or dirt. Exhausted, I began to stare at the ground. My eyes were now shielded from the snow, but I was starting to fall into a trance. My mind went blank as if to give its strength to my legs. All I could do was step forward, my left foot and my right became harder and harder to accomplish and my thighs felt sore. I held my thoughtless stare on the colorless mass I stepped in, occasionally managing to look up and search for my once gray ghost. I saw nothing, nothing but the snow. It was difficult not to fall from consciousness. When one is surrounded by uniformity, there is nothing to gain attention, with nothing new to be aware of, just a blank ocean void of uniqueness. It is hard to be alert, and hard to keep your eyes open. I remember my vision blurring. It was then that I realized I was no longer looking at the snow before my feet. Instead, I now stared straight down at my feet as they stepped. Before I could tell myself that I would not make it much further, my knees gave out. My view of the ground was magnified. My face brought closer as I fell. Once my legs had collapsed, little else could have maintained my upper position. As soon as I struck the snow below me, I found myself moving forward. My chest and my face went deep into the snow upon their fall. I managed to lift my mouth to the open air and breathe, but I could not sit up or stand. Somehow, the snow felt warmer as I laid there. I felt tired and had no real desire to get up. The pain in my legs was gone, and I could feel no other sensation than the chill of the wind and the odd warmth the frozen water seemed to give me. I wanted to sleep. I had never wanted anything more. My whole body seemed to beg me for rest, and I had no desire to deny it. My eyes slowly began to shut. The white became gray, and the gray became black. I could hear only the wind as it roared above me. As I started to drift from consciousness, 
The sound of the wind faded. I heard something else. It was quiet, but it stopped me from falling into sleep. Suddenly I heard it again, a step in the snow, with the crunch of a nearly dry leaf. I opened my eyes. The new stimulus gave me reason to focus, gave me something to focus on. Turning my head to one side, I had hoped to find the source, but I saw only snow. The step came again. It was light, but it was also close. I forced my head up and looked toward the sound. At first I saw nothing, only the white of the snow. Then I noticed that although the snow continued to fall, the white immediately in front of me did not move. Regaining some acuteness of vision, I saw that it was not snow. It was fur. A large, white front leg stood steady only inches from my face. Whatever paw lay at its end was buried, and so I forced to see what the leg was attached to. I lifted my head higher until my gaze met someone else's. Eyes that were surely green, but held a gray tint, stared back at mine across a great muzzle with the commanding yet easily feminine features of a wolf. A white wolf. It was her. I had found my mysterious gray ghost. Only now, she stood not on two legs, but on four. She looked down at me with eyes that gave away her concern. From some unknown origin, I gathered the energy to push myself up. My hands and my knees were down in the snow. Now, I too stood on all fours. I did not feel as though I could rise any further until the woman turned her head so as to direct my attention. I looked to my left and saw what I had been looking for all along. The forest. She-wolf came to my side and nudged me, commanding me to stand. Even though I had been drained of strength, I found the energy to rise. Hunched over and still feeling weak, I turned towards the trees. She-wolf stood by my side as I walked, watching me to ensure I did not fall again. Why she cared for me was beyond my knowledge. Even though a stranger may occasionally aid a stranger, this was quite different. I knew what she was, and I knew well what another may have done to her were they in my position. The weight of humanity's foolishness was heavy on my shoulders, and yet the woman walked beside me without hesitation. Perhaps it was because I followed her at first. Many would have turned away in fear, but I stepped forward out of curiosity. Regardless of my motives for that step, had I not taken it, I would not have found my destination. Now I walked with the guidance of a woman whose beauty was just as great in one form as it was in all others. The white she-wolf stepped alongside me, looking up at me as I held my arms crossed to keep my chest warm. The wind and snow no longer blew in my face but my body remained numb and stiff just as before. I was still exhausted, and I found myself surprised with each new step I took. I looked down at the woman turned wolf, and she looked back at me. One could have thought that, with how much we stared at each other, we were holding entire conversations within our own minds. However, I neither had the energy nor the desire to converse with anyone. I looked forward and saw that we had reached the edge of the forest. The trees were thick, providing a fair shield from some of the wind and snow. I would have a greater chance of surviving within the woods, but I quickly realized that I no longer had the strength to finish my journey. I stopped just inside the trees. The she-wolf stopped and looked at me, noticing that I was breathing heavy. The back of my throat was cold and sore. I matched gazes with the wolf once more, sighing as if to tell her that I could go no further. Again, my legs gave, and came to the ground beside a large tree and leaned up against it. It was still cold, but nowhere near as harsh as it was in the open white. I looked into the deep realm of brown towers, round at their bases and frayed like ropes at their tops. I thought that, perhaps, I might die. If I stayed there, beside that tree, it would most certainly be my fate. However, just as I began to accept that I would not make it, the lady wolf came over to me. 
she owed me nothing. In truth, it was because of her that I had made it so far. I was a fool to think I could make it through the storm, and yet, without any reason for doing so, nothing to gain, the lady wolf came close to me and I laid down. She rested against my side and set her head below mine. The warmth of her fur penetrated my coat. Her head stole the cold from my neck, and I welcomed the theft. The olive-skinned woman that was now a white-furred she-wolf stayed with me. I could feel the chest fill with cold air, then release it, the rhythm growing calmer as she fell to rest. I knew as I leaned against the tree and laid with her that, even if I did die soon, I would die with nothing more than what I needed. For nothing waited for me at home, only more of the same life I had lived and, apparently, took for granted. With the cold that teased me and the warmth beside me, I did not miss my home. I accepted whatever would come of my falling beside the tree, and I would pass into a cold sleep with my grey ghost beside me, my she-wolf, with fur as blank as the snow.